Hello, hello. It's time for another live. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm just getting my, uh, my, my, my system working here, so thank you for your patience as always, and thanks for being a part of the live series. Um, you know what, I'm going to move my mic just to hear so you can make sense, you can hear me. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in and being a part of, like I said, being a part of the lives and asking great questions and being uh, involved with what we're doing here at the SNWS. And uh, this is sort of like, it's, it's an opportunity for me to talk each night and for you to ask great questions. And, and I've been asked some great questions. And also I've been doing interviews with people as you've been seeing last year. We've got a few lined up for this year, which is really exciting, but no spoilers for that yet. Uh, and it is January Outturn Week. Just as a quick reminder at the beginning of the stream here for those who are tuning in nice and early, it's January Outturn, which is this Friday, the 10th of January. It's only the 10th. Feels like it's already been quite a long month, but um, it hasn't. It's only the 10th. Uh, you know how some months feel really slow and some people feel really fast? Um, for me each year, things like May, June, July go really fast because there's so much going on around the sort of the winter calendar, if you like, of, of whiskey events. But sometimes it feels really slow, like January feels really slow. And this one does so far, but we're only what, I don't know what the date is today, 6th, 7th or something. So look, um, it's also just rained outside, which is a welcome relief. And I hope some of that rain gets over to the areas that are bushfire affected. So my, um, my thoughts go out to all of those who are in those areas at the moment. Uh, I've thrown in some money to the RFS and, uh, I'm, and anything anyone can do is always, is always useful. But anyway, um, Jamie Poos, Whiskey Saurus, Sable Scotch Dram, just ramming, everyone, hello, hello, hello. Um, Surf Coast Smash Cakes, what a name. <laughs> hello, Surf Coast Smash Cakes. Uh, Caribbean Whiskey Drinker, Galotta Photography. Good to see you, uh, Peter. Been a while. Manly Spirits joining. Good to see you, Manly Spirits. Um, uh, is that you, David, or is that... Anyway, look, Vanessa or David or whoever's behind the Manly Spirits um, Instagram, hello, welcome. Um, SM Yan, SM Yan, welcome back. Uh, what a selection from everyday cheap bottles to nice experienced drams, exactly. Um, ha, 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 yes, much whiskey about lost track of time. Look, that happens. That happens to the best of us. Look, there's so much good stuff happening in whiskey all the time. That, and I, I've been asked some great questions in private messages and elsewhere in person as well. And a question that I get often asked at events as well about what are the different types of whiskies um, that exist in terms of the category? So if you say word whiskey, and I'm using that word broadly, this is what we're going to talk about tonight, about the different types that are produced uh, and I'm not going to talk international just right now. I'm going to talk about different types of Scotch whiskey. So I'm going to keep it narrow. Whiskey can be made anywhere in the world, any country. Um, it's a broad category uh, which can be where the spirit can be made in any country. You can have Icelandic whiskey. You can have Australian whiskey. You can have Scotch whiskey. You can have American whiskey. There's all these different types of whiskey that can be made. Um, in my personal opinion, and I'll keep this one personal, um, some in some cases it shouldn't be made. <laughs> Not every climate is suited to the maturation and distillation and maturation of whiskey. I'll be completely honest with you. Generally speaking, climates that are consistently hot uh, don't do well for the maturation of whiskey. Um, it's not always, look, that's that's not always the case, but it is often the case. But uh, like climates like Scotland are perfect for maturing whiskey. Climates like Ireland are perfect for it. Um, and then... Sort of, yeah, it, that's why, generally speaking, even in Australia, that's why, I mean, not it's not the only reason, one of the main reasons why Tasmanian whiskey is so popular. It's a colder climate down there. Uh, it matures whiskey in a much more uniform, not too hot and spicy kind of fashion. That's not what I want to talk about tonight, however. I want to talk about, for those of you who are regulars to this channel and are society members and whatnot, this is going to be basic stuff for you. But hopefully you'll learn something out of it all the way, and you can still ask questions, because I love these kind of questions, and you can learn a few things along the way. So, I have in front of me here, and it's fairly, it's mostly framed or okay, I think. I have six bottles of whiskey. And now, they're not six different types, but they are six um, bottles. And I want to start by talking about the different types of whiskey that exist out there. I'm going to start with blended whiskey. The term blended whiskey. Here we go. So, I've picked out a bottle of Dewar's 12. I'm going to hold that up for the camera. Hope you can see that one okay there. Dewar's 12-year-old. It's a blended whiskey. So, hold that up so you can see that there. Okay. Dewar's is part of the um, Bacardi family, so they, they have a number of distilleries that they source from. Actually, this isn't even open. Let me just okay, grab that. There we go. It's got the so it's a synthetic kind of, semi-synthetic kind of cork. It's been so long since I've had this, but I want to talk about what blended whiskey is. I'm just going to pour a tiny, tiny bit of that because 
This is meant to be a, um, a look, I'm not going to, anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what these categories are. Let's talk about what they are. Okay, blended whiskey means that it's a blend of malt whiskey and grain whiskey from two or more distilleries. There's a couple of distilleries out there that can get away with calling blended whiskey, blended whiskey from one distillery, but I'll talk about that later. But it's generally speaking, it is uh, blended whiskey is malt whiskey and grain whiskey from two or more distilleries. In some cases, it could be as high as, I think in this case, it's like five or six distilleries. I'd have to check that, I'm sorry. Um, but it's generally speaking, it's two or more. So this, we're just gonna cover the basics for now. It's matured in oak. In this case, it has to be matured for a minimum of three years. This one has an age statement. It says aged 12 years. That means it's aged a minimum of 12 years. They call this one Dewar's, the ancestor, blended Scotch whiskey. Uh, it says on here, um, or it said, uh, oh yeah, selected oak casks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but um, aged in hand-selected reserve casks for 12 years. This whiskey has long been admired as the ancestor. Uh, 700 real bottle, 40% ABV. 40% is the legal minimum that you can bottle at. Legal minimum. You can't bottle whiskey and call it Scotch whiskey at 37%, at 32%, at 12%, it has to be 40 or more. So that's, we're, we're covering some basics here, but I think it's really important to just dial back into the basics of whiskey and actually learn a bit about what the different types are, why they're different, and some of the basics. So it's two or more distilleries, generally speaking, Loch Lomond is one example of a distillery that have released a blended Scotch whiskey that is from their grain and malt facility distilling distilling sites on site for the one whiskey, and they call it a blended whiskey. They can call it a blended whiskey. The, the phrasing that's been outlawed by the SWA, the Scotch Whiskey Association, was vatted malt, but we'll get to that in a bit. So they don't call it a vatted malt anymore. They did, but now they call it a blended whiskey, and the recipe is now malt and grain from one distillery. Generally speaking, the cheaper the blended whiskey, uh, the higher the grain component, because grain whiskey is uh, is is easier to produce on mass. So it's easier to produce. It's also the grains that they use, like corn and wheat and whatnot, are cheaper per ton considerably than malted barley. Than barley. That is very grain forward. That is a great, very grain forward whiskey. But I'm getting green apples. Uh, a bit of metallic tin roof. That's not a good, not a great tasting note, but. Look, it's nice. It's nice. It's not outstanding. I'm gonna just tip that there. Okay. Um, sorry to Richard Patterson on you. Um, that was not intentional. Uh, I just realized I tipped whiskey out. Um, look, that's, it's a nice whiskey. It's, it's meant to be soft, inoffensive and very grain forward, very cheap and grain forward. It has it has its place, from, from sure, but it, it's just, it's not something I'd reach for regularly. So I wanna talk a little bit, um, I'm gonna grab some of these comments. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a giggle at the marketing. Look, I always laugh, you know, I, I work in, in marketing of single cask whiskeys, so I love reading the labels and tins and boxes, like the box of that Dewar's and things like that, and reading the copy and the, the imagery on it, and wondering, A, how much of it is just, pure nonsense in some cases and b how much of it is like i wonder how many people what how often people read these boxes like there's a spiel on here about john alexander dewar born in 1856 etc etc his entrepreneurial attitude and appointed master blender in 18 you know it's like it's, it's like a nice little spiel on the side of the box but I, I wonder how many people read this stuff there's so much wording on the back of these boxes and it's it's almost it's almost a, a booklet on the back here Anyway, enough about that. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, don't don't diss the grain. Hey 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 hey, Braun Peter. I'm not dissing grain. In fact, I'll get to grain. And I think and I wrote an actually. You know what? I'll go so far to say I wrote an article on uh, on our on our um, whiskey wise on the SMWS blog. But I also did a live stream here about it. I'm um, talking about how grain is seriously underrated, and people look at grains and think they're cheap. Uh, inferior to, to malts, they're not. And they also think that they're fillers for blends. They're not. They are, but they're also not. In that they are often used as filler for blends, for cheaper blends. But grain in itself can have so much character, as I, as I was going to explain a little bit later on, but you've caught me off guard, um, with things like single grain whiskies. In this case, a 29-year-old single grain. This one is basically 
butter pastries and vanilla ice cream in a glass. It's one of my favorite whiskeys from last year. So, um, uh, Jimmy says, currently drinking a fantastic blend. The femin uh, fen phenomenology. Look, you know, that's a compass box blend, that, and I think compass box do great blends. Um, they've done some fantastic blends. Um, I would argue that, yeah, that they, they do amazing blends. In fact, I would say they're very good. I don't have, I don't have any, don't think I have any compass box. In, oh, I might have some over there. I don't think I have any compass box in the office at the moment. If I do, I don't know where it is. Um, uh, okay, um, and how many are just guided by price? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, is there a, such a category as a single blend? Dram asks. Single blend. I don't think there. Single blend is a really interesting question. There are distilleries like Loch Lomond that produce all the blended components on site, but they call that a blended whiskey. I guess that's technically a single blend. Um, or. I mean, no, 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 that's not, that's not true. No, I mean, look, there's, I don't think it's a phrase that's ever used. So I'm going to say, I'm going to stick with that. I, I could be, I could be wrong on that. Um. <laughs> Agreed totally. Thanks, Braun Peter. The video never made it to YouTube. RIP you eating off grains. Look, yeah, look, it, it's true, actually. I don't think, look, not every video made it to YouTube, but I'm trying to make sure that most of them do. So, um. Monster of Mortjoin, good to see you. SM Yan, blend of single casks maybe. Well, look, Exotic Cargo was kind of that, SM Yan. But that was really interesting because that was actually, a, if I'm if I'm going to get my facts right on this, I, I, I might get pulled up on this later. But it was, if I if I recall correctly, things like Exotic Cargo, it was the the, the blending was done at a, at a new make level and then put into casks, which is unusual. But it created a lovely, lovely result. Um uh, vatted malt. Yeah, well, okay, Braun Peter, you've said the words vatted malt, which is resin alarm bell. Vatted malt is what is the next category, what I was going to talk about. Things like blended malts. Monkey shoulder is one, one example, a commercial example that we can probably all relate to. But another example would be things like peat fairy. So they're both examples of vatted malts, but the Scotch Whiskey Association, uh, I think in 2006 or 2008, uh, outlawed that the usage of those words and the, the Scotch whiskies are now are not allowed to use those words on bottles anymore. You can't use vatted malt anymore in producing Scotch whiskey. I think it was because there were a few sort of producers that sort of skirting the rules about what a vatted malt meant. And it meant the traditional meaning was supposed to be a mixture of just malt whiskey. So there's no grain use in this at all. It's just malt whiskies, mature malt whiskies, three years or more. Uh, and from two or more distilleries. In this case, it's mostly two or two distilleries. Um, and then that's put, and that was a mixture of malts from different distillery creating a vatted malt into a vat, if you like, you know, a settling tank. But you don't, they don't allow that anymore. So they just call it, we call it blended malt. Um, yeah, well, blended malts. So blended malt scotch whiskey as opposed to blended scotch whiskey. What's the difference between a blended whiskey and a blended malt? Apart from the actual sort of technical componentry is different. This involves grain whiskey and malt whiskey. This involves just malt whiskey and malt whiskies. Uh, one of the main other differences is the fact that the blended malts are te generally, I find, a little bit rounder, uh, a little bit richer and fuller. This is bottled at 40% uh, and things like Pete Ferry was bottled at 50 on the dot. Um, they are really fun and they're a way for you to discover uh, a, a nice harmonious blend of malted whiskies. Um, and sometimes they can be peated, unpeated. That doesn't make a difference uh, in, in terms of the classification. This one carries an age statement. The monkey shoulder doesn't. Um, they are very different whiskies, but they are two very examples, two varied examples of uh, blended malts. Um, oh, I hope my stream's still working because my um, my live here is just sort of carked it on me here. Okay, sorry. If anyone asks any questions in the last 30 seconds, I'm sorry, I just missed them because you might want to retype them, sorry. Because the the um my stream conked out on this phone, so that means I didn't know if that was meant that I was conking out on this one as well. Either way, okay, I'm still here. It looks like I'm live at the moment. So if you've asked a question in the last thirty seconds to sixty seconds or so, please just uh, throw it through again. So Monkey Shoulder is is a, is a great example of a blended malt, a commercially available blended malt. That one, lovely whiskey, and as you know, as as uh, members of the society will know, we've done a few blended malts of our own, including the marvelous Pete Ferry of which there's like one or two drams left in that bottle, or a few, maybe one or two, three, Ooh, I don't know. Anyway, 
Um, matured in ex bourbon barrels and hogsheads from Speyside and Isla, as it says on there. We've got a few extra heresies coming through in the next few months, members, so keep your eyes peeled. They're always lots of fun. Those who remember old fashioned, exotic cargo, two peat fairy batches. There's more coming as well, which is super exciting. There's two really exciting ones coming in March, I believe, or at least one in March and maybe one two months later or something, but we'll, um, we'll, you'll, you'll know about it, don't worry. Um, Monkey Shoulder uses 27 casks. Does it? I mean, I don't know. It says, I don't think that's actually a thing, Cal. I think that's just clever marketing. It does say on every bottle, and I think it said this pretty much from day one. I don't really know. I don't remember them changing this number ever, but it says batch 27, smooth and rich. I don't like the words smooth being used in whiskey, but each to their own. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a very good, it's, a, it's an actually a, a really well-crafted product. It's not, the whiskey's not really to my liking much uh, it's in, in my palate, but I think in terms of what it does and, and what it doesn't do is very interesting. And it's all malt, it's all malt whiskey. It's, it's, it's from the range of distilleries that uh, William Grant's use and own, which is Glenfiddich, Balvenie, Ken Envy, and Elsa Bay. I'll let you uh, speculate as over to which ones probably uh, dominate the, the profile in that one, but you'd probably never know. It probably changes here and there through replication, through style, but it, it does maintain consistency, and I think it's a very good blend of malt. Um, it's, look, it's probably not a triple malt, Calte. It's That's a very interesting discussion of one which I've heard some fantastic um, stories about. Um, it's probably a double malt, um, but it's also, it's, it's uh, yeah, it uses some interesting malts in there, no doubt. Just as, just as Pete Ferry did, we weren't able to disclose which distilleries went into this either. Um, I have an inkling, but I can't say. So there we go. We've started with blend, blended Scotch whiskey. Then we've moved to blended malt. Let's move them out of the way for a second. And then we move to single malt. Now, this is probably the category which many of you are already quite familiar with. Now, let's talk about the... Let's, sorry. Let's talk about the differences between single malt and blended malts and blended whiskies. Blended whiskies and blended malts all come from one... Um, all come from, sorry, two or more distilleries. Single malts use 100% malted barley. In this, I'm talking Scotch single malts here. They use 100% barley and they use, it's all the output from one distillery. What that doesn't mean is that it's not, it, it, that, it also, what that doesn't mean, it's not single cask, it's not small batch, it's, which is fairly meaningless as a word. Um, it's not one season, it's not one distiller, it's not one wise old Scotsman uh, working a warehouse. It's a, it's a team effort. It's anywhere between uh, a few casks to a few thousand each batch, depending on the size of the distillery and the size of the output and the release. Uh, that's why it maintains consistency. Consistency, which is these days on par with blended whiskey consistency, if not better than blended whiskey consistency. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, sorry, I'm just laughing at some of the comments coming through on our live feed on Instagram. If you're watching us on YouTube later, I, I also commend you. The live stream's good, good fun, but YouTube, you can watch it at your own pace and you can even just do the audio instead if you like. And I encourage you to do that by hitting the um, subscribe and bell button on, below on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, in, in, that, um, in that fashion, when, when we talk about something like a Glenmorangie Original, which is a 10-year-old single malt whiskey, uh, it's a lovely Speyside single malt whiskey. Um, oh, Highland, sorry. My brain tonight. It's a lovely Highland single malt whiskey that is uh, from one distillery. It's malted barley. It's matured 10 years from one distillery. It could have been 100 casks. It could have been 1,000. It could have been two. It doesn't matter. It's the output from one distillery. So people are often confused single malts as thinking it's, you know, it's, oh, it's one season or it's one harvest or it's one cask or whatever phrasing. And I think that's often a, a mis misconception there. Mis uh, yeah, an error. And then, of course, we move to what the society does and what I know so well is single cask, single malt whiskies. So this is an example of where we'd go into a distillery and pick out a single cask. Now, this is not code 125, but it's not too far off. It's code 123.30, a cheeky little number. A um, single cask, nine-year-old in this case, um, one which I picked up a, a couple of months ago from an outturn uh, personal bottle for myself, um, which is really, really lovely whiskey. Uh, this is actually a, it's a Highland distillery, technically, that matures all of its stock in the lowlands, basically across the road from where they are. Um, 
this is a really cool piece of sort of. Uh, uh, I think that their spirit excels in first fill uh, ex bourbon barrels like this one is. And so it's got that lovely tropical notes and papaya and mango notes in it. And it's um, a real proper summer whiskey, which is why I cracked it. Um, any 21 year old distilled in 1999 being a new year in the, uh, in the outturn. I don't think there's any 99 casks in outturn this time, Cal. I'm very sorry. I'll keep an eye out for you though. I've told you I would. There's, I'll keep, keep an eye out for any of the, um, any of the, that sort of era or that exact uh, year. But finding that year isn't hard in whiskey. It's, it's only when you get quite old and you have to find whiskeys from, uh, you, know, you know, an older year. <laughs> and trust me, the older you get, the harder it is to find uh, whiskeys from that year. So in this, is, this case, this is one, as I was saying, this is one cask, this is what society does, it's one cask from one, from one distillery and it has a unique flavor profile because every single cask in a warehouse is different. The wood interacts differently with the spirit on each and they each have their own idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies their own flavors, their own approach. They all have a different approach to, to each to, and a different story to tell in each cask which is so exciting because it means that every cask you try is different. They've all been approved by panel. They're all lots of fun to enjoy. And that's where I wanted to start tonight, talking a bit about those things. Look, that's also where I wanted to finish tonight because it was just a chance for me to talk to you about some of the differences in what these whiskies are, what the differences between a blend, a blended malt, a single malt, and a single cask single malt. What we didn't really touch on was there is isn't one more category called single grain. We've seen a couple of single grains through. Um, I know Compass Box did one. I know, uh, uh, off the top of my head, oh, Haig, Haig Club, uh, the David Beckham perfume bottle one. Um, and thing, things like that. Single grain, it's not, it doesn't mean it's from one grain, by the way. It just, it, it means that it's, it's a, entirely a grain whiskey. Just like in single malt whiskey, you can use multiple barley types. In fact, there's some distilleries who I know use six, seven, or eight different types of barley to create their 100% single malt whiskey. You can use different types of grain, and most do. Most, even if it's something like a wheat uh, or a corn-based whiskey, they'll still use a small element of barley just to get the enzymes, get the, the flavor activation happening. Getting entirely single origin, single grain whiskey, I don't really think happens. I don't know of any examples of that. If you know of any examples of where a whiskey is... Oh, except for mellow corn, maybe, in the United States, or... Anyway. If you know of any examples of any grain whiskies that are entirely one grain, I'd love to hear that. I don't think it's a thing. And if it is a thing, I think it'd be a tremendously uninteresting whiskey, if I'm being honest. Um, that's all from me tonight. Thank you for tuning in for the live stream again on this Monday night. It's a great way to kick off the week with a, uh, a dram and talking about some of the basics, getting back into the basics again, and exploring what that is and what they are and how that works. So thank you again. I'll see you all soon. See you all tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Cheers.